What's up guys, today I want to talk to you about stylized wood. Why wood? Good question. Alright, let's head over to Pinterest and we're going to look for something to make. After quickly scrolling through, you're probably going to notice something. I don't like Stylized wood. It's coarse and rough and irritating and it gets everywhere. So now that I've changed my shirt and grown a beard, let's get started. So I'm going to be starting with this little block out that I made in Blender, but if you don't have your own wooden piece to work on, you can grab this model on my gum road. You're also going to get the Blender file with the block out, decimated sculpt, and the final low poly mac. You also get access to my Substance Painter file for my next video on texturing stylized wood and also a wood smart material for Substance Painter. I'm also going to be using the Orbs brush pack for this video, which is free, and the Orbs clay material. I'll post both of the URLs for those in the description below. To start, let's press Ctrl F to view our polygroups. Going over to our polygroups menu on the right and pressing order groups, we can separate those out. This will make it so we can use the groups feature in Dynamesh, which we're going to do now, and setting the resolution to 1024. Now you can see with the groups feature enabled, none of our pieces have glued together in the process. Our first brush will be the Trim Dynamic. Going to Stroke menu, it can enable Lazy Mouse to give us nice smooth strokes. I like to set the radius to around 30. Using Control shift click since we already have our polygroups set up now, we can isolate each mesh in the subtool and focus on one piece at a time. We're going to start by running along each of the hard edges with the trim dynamic just to add a nice bevel. Now that one plank is done, we just got to repeat for the rest of the pieces. Still using the trim dynamic brush, we can turn off the lazy mouse and we're also going to go along the edges of these nails. Now that we've beveled everything, let's go to our brush menu and load in the Orbs Cracks brush. I like to set the intensity to something between 20 and 25. I find the default value a little too soft and we also want to turn on Lazy Mouse again. We're going to start adding in the wood grain now. When marking in the grain, I find myself using the same stroke patterns a lot over and over again. I'm going to put an example up on screen you might find useful. It's not a hard set rule to use these patterns, but it might make it easier to start with. It's also important to vary the pen pressure, adding in some variation in the line thickness as you go. This can take a bit of practice to get nice smooth lines while also varying thickness, so don't be afraid to undo and try again until you get a nice looking stroke. Now we want to do the same for the other side of the plank. A neat little trick is to add the connecting lines at the ends first. This way you can see your start and end points on the other side and this will just make it easier to keep the lines flowing. Our wood grain is now done, it's looking good, but we want to break up those straight lines on the ends of the blanks. Holding down control to enter masking mode, let's go to our brush menu and change it to the mask lasso tool. Now we can mask off some of our ends using our grain as guides and just pull them out slightly. Thank you. 
Let's grab our H polish brush now and set the alpha to square alpha. I'm going to start chipping away at the corners and just pushing in with the pen and scrubbing. Think of it like using an eraser. We can also then use the H polish along the edges, carving out some pieces and just varying the thickness of that bevel we did earlier. And uh, yeah, we just want to add a little more damage and make things overall a little bit more interesting. To add the final touches to the wood, we can use the clay brush and add in some small dots and dents. And if you want to add a little more damage and wear, you can experiment with using the orb slash curve and also the regular slash brush. You may want to go into the brush menu and under auto masking turn on back face masking for the slash brush as it has a tendency to push through to the other side of the mesh. Grabbing the H polish brush again with the square alpha we can finish off the nails by carving in some of the edges and corners. And there you go, you are now a wood sculpting master. Go forth and spread the good wood. If you like the tutorial, feel free to like and subscribe. You would earn my eternal love and it would really help out my channel. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. If you're also interested in learning how to texture stylized wood, you can check out my other video, which should be live in a couple of days after I release this one. And I will see you in the next one.